it's taking. The whole we're gonna play the whole opening. Yeah, I guess we. Yeah, are. I guess we are. Seems like everything's fine here in Station Square. Nothing to worry about. Oh, that. Uh oh. Oh no. This. Oh. This is bad. Look at all this water. Oh, this is gonna take a long time to clean up. Then there's tails. B -b -b Big. Open your heart, it's gonna be all right. Wow, the entire opening to the Sega Dreamcast's launch day title, Sonic Adventure, if you didn't press any button on the controller prior to the press start screen. Wow, welcome back to Sonic Weekly. This week, we are anticipating the anniversary, the 25th anniversary of 9999, the US, the North American release date, of the Sega Dreamcast, the last Sega console. And uh, that's the subject for this week's episode. I'm Grant with me always here on Sonic Weekly, the star of the show. It's David the Lurker from Sonic Retro. Hi, David. Oh, hi, Grant. It's nice to see you again. You were sorely missed last week. And this week you've come in and swapped out. Bo was Grant. And now Grant is Grant. And Bo is not here that's right uh, he Bo and will... i were we're tag teaming in for now that's uh, right Just back we will, <laughs> yeah we'll we will all reunite and bring captain planet to life and uh <laughs> the captain of our planet this week is our guest he's a, a rack on tour of of artistry and game development and design so uh, he's back on the show it's michael stearns hi michael hi glad to be here so the Dreams, a cast. We talk about the Sega Saturn nearly every week. Bo is, uh, is always saying, Sega Saturn this, Sega Saturn that. Mm -hmm. And Sega Saturn's interesting. Sega Saturn is very expensive. It was expensive back then. It's, it's expensive now. It's only become more <laughs> expensive. The Sega Dreamcast was marketed as, was it? Okay, I, this, this is a, David, I'm going to ask you a question that you'll probably have to Google to start. Uh, probably. Let's, uh, let's go. Was the Sega Dreamcast the lowest cost Sega console at launch? At launch? For Sega. Was it less expensive than the Genesis Mega Drive? I um, think I believe I'm... so. Right. Because the Dreamcast famously released in the US for uh, $200. Um, now, when Sonic. Oh, okay. Um, it looks like when the Genesis was released in the US, it was also. Two hundred dollars. It was two hundred dollars. Apparently, that's what I right because I remember they it wasn't they like lowered one eighty nine or one seventy nine uh, or something. Uh, it might have happened real quick yeah. because you know they release it, no one's buying it because the the NES forever. And by the time it was uh, you know Sonic was around, that would have been one forty nine at that point, right? So it was definitely cheaper than the Super N N Nintendo. Yeah. I'm just sitting here mm -hmm. going, is that right? I think it's right. Um, yeah. And so the Dreamcast, 
it was i mean that price point was a big deal well it was a big deal because the saturn famously launched it was uh 399 playstation was 299 like you're already a huge increase in comparison to the to the old 16 bitters but uh like the saturn was just even though we love it it was caught in its own orbit yeah and we yeah. were we were on the ground yeah we were we were on the ground with the with the playstation a uh, hundred bucks cheaper going down and down and down. But then the Dreamcast, you know, like we went to sleep and we wanted to commune with the universe. And the universe said, wouldn't you love a video game system that's $199 and 99 cents with a comes with a modem uh, VMU sold separately. And we went, sure. <laughs> yeah. Now the media landscape, of course, was quite yes. different then, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, yeah. And so we've talked about gaming magazines, particularly EGM a few times. And EGM covered the Dreamcast pretty extensively and, and did it its fair share to hype people up for the new system. This this uh, one I'm holding is from is their September 99 issue, issue mm -hmm. 122, saying it's the biggest 24 hours in entertainment history, question mark. But the editorial that opens the issue uh, is is kind of pretty bullish on it. It's acknowledging that the PlayStation 2 is coming, mm -hmm. but it's saying uh, uh, it's saying that uh, I was going to quote it, and then I was like, am I going to read this whole thing? I was setting it up like I would. But now as I look at it, it's probably better to just summarize it. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll grab a couple of quotes. How about this? Uh, there's a good chance that it will change the way home users access the internet. It's mm. cheap, effective, and fast. And when you factor in some of the ideas for the huge multiplayer games due next year, Sega may well get more people online than Apple did when it launched the iMac. Wow, the iMac. Yes. Uh, Another quote, there is an overwhelming feeling that this thing is going to be big. Sure, everyone has reservations because of Sega's history, 32X, Sega CD, and a lot of you seem concerned that PlayStation 2 and Dolphin are going to come in and pull the carpet from underneath the DC, but one look at Soul Calibur is usually enough to make people feel better about things. All right. Soul Calibur was was like the big one, one of the big ones. That, that was. And and it was a it was an extensive launch library. They, they mm -hmm. also say there are the, which I don't know if their count is right. We were just checking it. But they say there are 24 games set for day one as we go to press, and there's hardly a Duff one on the list. But well, they're not willing to call one of them Duff, David. Wow. Yeah. It was... Um, it Because you say 22, the, the number that always stuck in my head uh, was 19. And going through the list over at SegaRetro.org... Uh, there are 19 titles, but one of them includes the web browser, which mm. I don't know if you can really count that as a game, but uh, I guess the web browser was a big deal unless you had a 1800. Like how how much were computers back in the late 90s? They were expensive. They were expensive. Right. And there was a time in mm -hmm. the year 2000 when the only Internet service provider for my home was mm -hmm. Sega Net and the Sega Dreamcast because wow the computer we'd been using it for a few years uh, but it was a little out of date with its AOL you know probably still on AOL <laughs> 4.0 maybe 5.0 oh. but hey, certainly 5 not up to the blazing game. standards of AOL 8.0 yeah. uh, so the Dreamcast was, was how I was though. doing IRC chat and listening to MIDI clips of songs uh, mm -hmm. and having a, a grand old time, but that launch date was huge. Um, and it was, I pretty sure it was the first time I can't imagine early for me, it was the first time getting a console on day one. So it, it definitely has a special memory uh, in that way. But I'm wondering if you guys also got the console on day one, nine, nine 99. And if you had done that before. Uh, well, hey, Michael, you're the guest. Do you want to go first? Oh, sure. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, it was, I was, that was a day one purchase for me. And it had a lot to do with, you know, having a, a tremendous amount of personal hype and excitement behind it. But that low price that we were talking about was like, this is, that was the price that the Saturn was at when I bought a Saturn. Um, and it was like, wow, I don't have, 
I don't have to wait for the price to go down because, you know, console prices back then would go down when mm-hmm. you uh, waited a bit for them. And um, aside from really needing to get Sonic Adventure immediately, um, it was like, hey, it's $200. I'm a college student. I'm working a part-time job. I am flush with cash for Dreamcast and, you know, a couple of games. This is... Uh, I'm I'm ready to go. Right. Wait, you were a, you were a what student? A college student. You were a college student. You were you were in college? Whoa, yeah. that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Michael is like the exact person that you're always wondering what they think, David. The person who's like just a little just, just a couple little... years older who who experienced the things with a little more yeah, their brains developed. This, this is so funny because I'm always wondering what what did people a little bit older than me what did they think of Mario? What, what did, did they, they think, think of Mario, Mario 3? This, I'm really curious. <laughs> yeah, right. Because um, I was in high school. Yeah, you know, I was, I, was, uh, I was young and impressionable. And I had been waiting for a very long time for this, for this system. Uh, I did get it on day one. Although my parents refused to let me skip school and i was like but i need to get it even uh i I had a pre-ordered at best buy and because if you pre-ordered at best buy you'd also get a free t-shirt which i do still have and in fact might have right next to me somewhere which i can look for in a second um the uh because i'm i'm in a closet Uh, i'm near a closet i'm in a closet it doesn't matter anyway yes so my mother went and picked it up for me because Best Buy would, was not, would not open until after I was already in school. So when I got back, I was the, the pain and the suffering of having to sit there in class knowing that Sonic mm. Adventure was sitting in my room. Ah, so yeah, but I, I played it. Although for whatever reason, like I wanted to savor the experience. So instead of putting Sonic Adventure in immediately, I put in the demo disc first and played <laughs> played Emerald Coast on the demo disc. Ah. Played around a little bit on there and then went okay. That's now it's it's time for the main feature. Well, I don't and, remember there being a demo disc. I'm I'm yeah, sure there was one, but I don't either. I I, <laughs> I, mean, I remember many I remember, demo discs, but not right, one but later. Went. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I, I, I remember, remember all my Saturn demo discs. Those were very important to me. But all right, it's it was um orange. It was like it was called like generations or something. I'm uh-huh. sure I've got huh. it. It's probably sitting in a yeah a drawer it, or something. It had a uh, um. I'll just say what we're all thinking. I think you're making it up. I think this is totally <laughs> oh, okay. made up. Right. It, it had a demo for uh, Ready to Rumble Boxing. I remember that. Uh, that was okay. one of the games yeah. that uh, I played recently as i was Whoa. thinking about the anniversary coming up and it was also a launch day title that i never parted with i at one point parted with sonic adventure and then rebought sonic adventure isn't that crazy what was i thinking i don't know exactly is it possible that you just didn't know that you had ready to rumble boxing like it was just like in the bottom <laughs> I, of a box somewhere and you yeah, I, i've always kind of admired I've, I've always kind of liked ready to rumble boxing yeah. in some ways but you know mm-hmm. uh Quick aside, back to where we were a moment ago in terms of how yes. many games it launched with. In this fold-out deluxe magazine ad, okay, the the Sega count is twenty four games available fall ninety nine, right? But it's actually twenty six because it doesn't list in that twenty four the two headline games for the system, which have their own page, which is Sonic Adventure and Sega Sports NFL two K. The Sonic right. Adventure ad is the uh, Sonic has a new light speed dash. Too bad you have the same lame ass reflexes ad. And the NFL 2K is, hey, genius, it knows you like running off tackle on third and short. Obstinate little tool, aren't you? All These right. were the ads where they showed like almost like a film strip on the left side. And then the rest, of, most of the ad is just black blank space. Wow. They, um, they just wanted to insult you. That's what... Sega was like we were yeah. we were cool and hip in the '90s in the in the early '90s. We have that edge, and then and then PlayStation came, play, Sony went out and said we're going to be even ruder. And Sega was like, I guess we have to be even ruder than that. 
and we need to insult our customer base saying mm-hmm. they don't know how to play video games. Well, y- you know who Sony hired? Did they uh, hire the Sega people? They hired the Sega people wow. who were doing the Genesis. Um, there, the 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 PlayStation One when that came out, they they pulled a bunch of Sega advertising people, and um, Sega probably should have uh, not switched. Yeah, yeah but it's it's uh, kind of fascinating. Let's play a quick little uh, Sega Dreamcast game. Wow. Uh, uh, let's go through these twenty six games, and let's um, buy rent uh-huh or pass or no you know what buy rent or steal um steal <laughs> yeah it's very well, easy to emulate uh games on the dreamcast uh the gd rom was a proprietary disc format that was intended to uh prevent piracy but inadvertently opened the doors to it uh it being the yeah. most commonly pirated pirated system yeah uh I won't lie, I did pirate a couple things. Well, I mean, the story about how they they eventually got it open was kind of an interesting thing. I don't remember any of the details on this, but it wasn't like immediate. It wasn't like it wasn't the GD ROM's fault. It was uh it was like somebody left a dev kit out and somebody oh, stole really? it or something. Oh wow. Um, oh, so the GD ROM was fine. It was just they gave away the the codes. Well, they, they didn't mean to, but it they kind of left the keys in it. Um, I see. At the oh. rent, and someone was able to get it somehow. And they would have been able to hack their way in eventually, but this just made it a, a lot easier. Right. And by the time they were really, you know, it was, the, the writing was on the wall. The... All right, which is unfortunate because, yeah. hey, you know what? They should have washed that writing off the wall. Yeah. But people would have kept buying the Dreamcast. Yeah. Speaking of writing on the wall, yeah, let's see. Yeah, games, games, games gets a little little uh, quote, a little little uh, quip of its own. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, for example, this first game, we're going to go in reverse order. Number twenty four on the list uh-huh. uh, from the publisher Acclaim. Uh-huh. The Steel. quote is "Body slams to make Mama proud." Do you want to guess which title this is? Well, that's uh, that's a. Uh, is it? I, I mean, I'm just. It's it's obviously a wrestling game, right? That's true. It's is it W, W F. Mm-hmm. Yes. Extreme. Oh no! Beach oh. volleyball. <laughs> no, um, so close. Like, you're you're on the right. Yeah. Course. Uh, uh, right. Do you I... remember what the the subtitle was for this W W F Dreamcast F, launch game? Game. Correct. It was not yet WWE. Yeah. This right. was still WWF. Whoa. The World Wildlife Foundation. Yes. That's right. I don't know why they made all those panda bears wrestle, but yeah. they were... It was dark. It was a different time. <laughs> People forget what Pokemon nice was based on. It was very nice of the WWF on. to change their name. All yeah. Right. Um, God. I I mean, I don't know. Attitude? Yes. Yes. Oh, is that what it was? Just it that... is. Okay. Well, well done. All right. Uh, because this was the Attitude Era in wwf wasn't right. it right yeah because that's the only subtitle i can think of because nowadays i think they just have a year after it right like wwe 24 yeah i think it's in the 2k series actually i think it's like wwe 2k 24 yeah so that's that's what that's all about so uh, the wwf games of this era and i don't know if this is the case on the dreamcast version but it, they had custom characters that egm certainly loved with mm-hmm. the Nintendo 64 versions, you may remember. Do you remember their character, Elephant Sack? Isak? Isak? Do you remember um, this character? This recurring character in the magazines of the era where it was just like a big fat guy, like the fattest you could make a guy. And uh, <laughs> they named him Elephant Sack, and he just would appear in like all the screenshots anytime there was a wrestling game. Oh. Um, Look it up. Just Google elephant sack. No C, just the K. Okay, right. You might get something else if you ask the C. But by all means. Okay, so what do you think? Buy, uh, rent, or steal? That seems like a rent to me. Like, my brother and I would play a wrestling game now and then. It wasn't, you know, we were uh, fighting game snobs. So we were going to be playing, you know, Street Fighter or uh, Soul Calibur or something on there. We weren't going to necessarily 
want to spend a lot of time with a wrestling game, but you know, I'd rent it. We'd, we'd check it out. Yeah. Um, and fun. I, and a lot and of the also, Dreamcast games I don't want to give a claim any of my money. So yeah, I kind of don't like them. Let's just steal it. Uh, I was never, I've never well, been I'll support huge the rental into, store. I steal it from the rental store. Yeah. Uh, I've never been super <laughs> huge into, into wrestling in general. So like even on a, on a renting level, I would have never been like, oh, let me rent this instead of something else entirely. So if the only other choice is steal, I guess I'm stealing it, which seems more permanent because I had yeah. to download it, burn it onto a CD. You're right. You're right. There the needs to be a fourth steel, option. The problem with steal is that it sounds like we wanted it so bad we would stop at nothing to get it. Yeah. Which, right. Right. Um, so yeah. maybe, maybe that's not pass- accurate. Maybe steal means I'm going to put it in a pile of GD ROMs. And I'm gonna play it for two minutes, and I'm gonna go. Uh, this didn't click with me right away. It's garbage. And throw then throw it out the window. Throw, yeah, 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 yeah. You throw but, it out the window. It hits your neighbor in the head, and they go, "Oh, I love WWF." <laughs> but it's because it gets like lodged into them. It like slices into their brain. No, and, like, no, oh. no, no, no. It lands in their hands, and they're like, "Oh, cool, a CD-ROM." And it's like, "Oh, this is less than an AOL disc." <laughs> put this okay, in fine. Wrong. There's, there's a, there's still, a, there's a pass option. There, there may just be like, a, I am not interested in this option which it sounds like is your true yeah choice i will steal it and then pass on it Mm. yeah i I feel the same way i i was i was i was uh a bit persuaded by michael's rent uh Mm -hmm. but i think i lean towards not interested but to be honest a rental is not a bad idea because so many of the dreamcast games are not they don't they're not they're short-term burst games and a wrestling game seems like that would be you could get through you could get to gameplay in two menus if it's more yeah. than two menus to get to gameplay in wwf yeah. attitude then count me out but if you okay. can get to gameplay in two menus then I, I yeah i think rental okay to be honest i would probably pass also but i was just kind of being nice <laughs> okay you know what we're all passing on wwf attitude sorry <laughs> WWF attitude. I, mean, I we don't I, care we did, we did play some wrestling games so mm-hmm. i had to kind of like well you know there, okay. I could see renting it. Right. That was that was good for that was a good attitude check for us to yeah. see: are we willing to to let the claws out <laughs> and really uh-huh. be honest about how many? I mean, there, if you're only interested in two, if you buy two games at launch, yes. you're spending uh, four hundred dollars, yeah. right? But that oh, was that one of the launch titles because there were nineteen, and you're reading a list of twenty six. Yeah. So is that even one of the nineteen? I don't know. Uh, I mean, no I, way to tell. Well, I could look it up real fast. Of course, no, it's impossible. S- no. Okay, I- the next one is from <laughs> Ubisoft. It says excessive speed will be tolerated, and there's no way you're going to guess it. Is it? Is it Need for Speed? No, good guess, but no. Didn't I don't think that existed yet. Um, Actually, it was a terrible guess. I knowing yeah. what but we know. I'm about. like, wait, that was like a. Yeah, it's like a 360 yeah. time. Yeah. Um, uh, fast cars. Uh, great, great. Very close. It's Speed Devils, speed uh, and this is a pass devils? for me. I don't. I don't know what this is. Ubi I don't give a shit. Excessive speed will be tolerated. But it's from Ubisoft. Okay. I mean, they're a they're a reliable well developer. Sometimes, well, I mean, when they're a developer, yeah. But yeah, they're, they're just a publisher. That's kind true. of like an acclaim level publisher of just cranking stuff out. Yeah, you know what yeah. Ubi stands for, right? It's ubiquitous. They wanted to just be doing everything, and that meant cranking out garbage also right wait what's the name of this game again <laughs> speed devils speed it's trademarked devils i think i should call it ubi racers maybe <laughs> i i like have no idea what that game is yeah I've never... that's a, a total blank for me that's a yeah, that's a real i, I don't care <laughs> yeah that, that is an extreme i don't care i'm like i'm looking it up right now oh it's it's got a little demon head oh, because it's devils yeah Okay, this yeah, came I'm looking out. It up also right, because... this is a fall title. This is not a launch title. It says it okay. came out October launch 9th, window. 29th. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, so, so you had to wait a month. You had to wait a month if you but really wanted to. This is what Sega was, Sega was beating their chest about this. Sega wanted there's, this to be um, known. Right. There's multiple versions of this, and they don't appear to be the the British were, version. It was called... I've got Speed Devils uh-huh. with a devil in the logo, and then I've got Speed Devils... Which is just like fire in the background, and they right. Both- well, also, I guess for some reason, 
or the original PC version was called Speed Busters. Oh, now we're talking. <laughs> oh, I'd buy that immediately. Yeah, Speed uh, Buster. If it were Speed Breaker, that would be even better. Ooh, yeah. Uh, but Breaker with like breaking something. Not looks like, like they dropped the ball. Breaks. Clearly, um, nobody cares about this game, Ubisoft. I'm gonna. I'm going to pass on it because who cares? <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that's a puff puff pass from me. Dog. I'm not going to call uh, it a hard pass because it's it's a soft pass because I don't think I even knew about this game. OK, our next I game, either. No. our next game is from Sega. Oh, OK, here we go. So, yeah, exactly. Put uh, oh, uh, we have to guess. Is that the only hint we get? Uh, <laughs> uh, couch fishing at its best is the Ooh, tagline. That's so, got to be of course. Yeah, there's only one game, and that's Sega Bass Fishing, baby. That's exactly right. Sega Bass Fishing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wait, it's not, it's not Get Bass? <laughs> Get is Bass that a different is a, game? That's a different game. Yeah. Okay. Oh, really? But that that's was on there, there too, wasn't it? Um. Oh, man, I'm trying to remember. Uh, let me get... No. I'm going to look At least it up. Not, not on this next list. year. How about that? Whoa, that's a, it is the same game. Get Bass is a Japanese name. I was going to say, I, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. But I didn't say it, but I was thinking it. You were God thinking it. You should have said, right. said it, but I didn't Because say I know it. there is there is like a sequel. Like Sega's made a, another. There's more than just the one fishing game. But uh, yeah, I never owned this on the Dreamcast. Um, but I, I would I would put it on a renting list because you know what? It's fun arcade action. The only issue is, how, do you also rent the controller? Obviously, you do. Oh, yeah. Okay, well then you're yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what? We're talking about renting. I know we're doing this list, but did anyone here rent the Dreamcast early? I sure yes. did from Hollywood Video. Whoa, I have wow. a I have a different a different angle on this story. Oh, okay. because this 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 kind of goes back to the question about what did cool older people think, and you're going to discover that I was not a cool older person. Don't I ruin was, the illusion. <laughs> so, my local game store was um, was a pretty cool store, apparently, and they got a Dreamcast from Japan ahead of time oh. to rent, and they got it to rent to cool college kids, which I had just become. Whoa. And Whoa. I'm like, cool, I'm going to rent a Dreamcast, right? And they had all the big uh, launch games in Japan. You know, they had, I, I want to say Virtua Fighter probably was on there. They had Get Bass. Um, they had a couple other games, I want to say. I don't remember what they were. And you know what they didn't have? Uh-oh. They Sonic? did not have Sonic Adventure because that is no. a game for babies. And what? And I said to the guy, I was like, you don't have Sonic Adventure. Well, why not? And he says, well, I, my audience is college students. They're not going to want that. And I'm like, oh, boy. Oh, a, what the, a devastating thing to say. What a the, devastating the, thing to my, hear. The, the, the Sonic fans hanging out on the forums with me who are just a couple of years younger, they're going to be really devastated to learn that I'm not <laughs> as cool. <laughs> Oh boy! Right. I what mean, games did they have? Whoa! Um, Virtua Fighter, you said. Yeah, Virtua Fighter. They had they had Get Bass. Yes. Um, they had uh, maybe they had Blue Stinger. Okay. Um, okay. I'm gonna say uh, it was not a very interesting lineup because the Japanese not the sports lineup games, was I guess. not as is, exciting as yeah, the right. American one. No, the, yeah, they only had like three or four games. It, and, right, it was Virtua Fighter three, uh, yeah. a Godzilla game. Yeah, they had the Godzilla game. Right, which right. Well, I did do. Neat, what I, I did do. Release it here. The and following the, summer, Sega had released Sonic Adventure USA uh, International. No, they had they had released or, or they had re released Sonic Adventure as like a twenty nine ninety nine bargain title in anticipation of Sonic Adventure International coming out. Mm-hmm. So there's like the old the oldest buggiest version of Dream on Dreamcast of Sonic Adventure because they they did fix some things if I recall for the US version. And yes. a friend of mine went to Japan. He had got like his parents were like, hey, you graduated from high school. You're going to get to go on a, a cool trip to uh, anywhere that you want to go. And he was like, I'm going to Japan. And um, and we were like, get us gifts, please. <laughs> so he brought back Sonic Adventure for me. And I was like, Ooh. this is great. I'm going to go take this to that video rental store. And I'm going to go rent a Dreamcast with no games because I have the game. 
that I want to play. <laughs> You're gonna mess and with so them. I got a little, I got a little early, early play that way. Okay, Ooh, fancy. Does yeah, that mean wow. you snuck into Casinopolis with Amy? <laughs> nope, oh, I did man. not. I, right, I don't you know what that is. Oh, right. It's um because in the original Japanese version, you can stand on the Burger Man statue, which you can't in in the later versions. So what you can do is if you run and jump on the top and do the hammer slam, it gives Amy just enough height to hit the button to Casino Opolis, which she's not allowed in. And you can play it. You can run around. But when you beat the level, the game doesn't know what to do. And so it plays the cutscene of Perfect Chaos destroying Station Square, and then the game crashes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That is right. What you should have told this uh, college video game man owner. Yeah. Like, did, did he, like, well, Sega is going to sponsor the MTV Video Music Awards on 9999. Hosted by Chris Rock. Right. And they're going to play all these commercials, and Sonic's at the center of them all. Yeah. And, because there was also that really cool, like, do you remember that that spy commercial where it's mm-hmm. like, oh, right, where you have like, oh, look at that lady spy. Proto Rouge, we'll call her, even though that's not what it is. And she's like, I got to steal it. And oh, so much all that security and zipping and zooping. But she gets foiled because the characters inside the Dreamcast are like, uh, 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 no, no, no. Yeah, they, because it's thinking. It's thinking. And all the characters live together. Yeah. In the system, in a multi-tiered sort of hotel resort. Isn't uh, it great to know that, club. that those guys were in your Dreamcast, you know, like if you're having a bad day or whatever, you know, they're down there rooting for you. Yeah. If somebody tries to steal your Dreamcast, you know, like that time some people stole your bike, maybe they won't get away with that Dreamcast because right. some sports guys are going to just reach out of there and they're going to be all like, no Even way. though I guess the real answer is they're not going to steal it because they want to steal the PlayStation 2. Oh, uh, <laughs> But yeah. I'm not stealing this thing. It doesn't play DVDs. And right. when the Dreamcast wouldn't play anything because the uh, disc lens was dirty, you could just be like, it's sleeping. Like, it oh, just yeah. Didn't, you don't want to wake it up. Uh, you don't need yeah. to. Well, clean everyone the lens. in the Dreamcast went somewhere else. That's why it couldn't work anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you tuck the Dreamcast in with a little, little blanket. <laughs> Very sweet. Um, it's, um, it's dreaming. It's Whoa. dreaming. Yeah. Why wasn't it dreaming? Don't dream- disturb it. Hmm. Anyway, you know okay. when it wakes up, it's going to make a fierce, piercing <laughs> sound with those VMU batteries being in there. <laughs> oh, right. That that was the issue with the intro. You didn't have the loud disc reader. You didn't right. have the VMU beeping. That's you also right. had that in post, even though I've mentioned it now. So you can't edit in post, add it in post uh, unless we'll just, you edit this out. <laughs> yeah, we'll just we'll VMU beep out the specifics. <laughs> uh, Maybe we should swear. And yeah, that should be VMU beep to. Um, yeah. All right. That son of a bitch. Right. So you've got a, a list that we still got, what, 24 games on this list? <laughs> 23? Yes, David, that's exactly right. Uh, because I assume that we're all uh, in agreement on renting both the controller, the fishing rod controller, yes. and the game Sega Bass Fishing. Not buying, not stealing, because... Ow. I don't want to keep we're, this controller. We're not going to pass on it. Come on. No, it's a Sega. You can't pass on a Sega game. But That's right. even though I have passed on this, I passed on it then. I passed on it now. Like well, I, I could have, <laughs> but I have never at any point really sought out uh-huh. renting well, or owning or stealing. I guess you could be like, you know, this this is a, a hypothetical where you have right a lot of disposable income. You can't buy and all time. nineteen games, but you can buy a fair amount if you want. Yeah, you're you're a a, a young teenager. Yeah, put Whoa. yourself in. That's right. Put Although yourself it took in prime a, rental time. It took me a while to to save for the Dreamcast though, because I I didn't me have too. a job. I didn't have income, so I had. I this, was thirteen. I was yeah. working for my parents. Right, like it was illegal, really. But right. uh, squirrel away birthday, Christmas money. Oh yeah. Um, yes. Oh, I should probably mention. You know, I was so excited about the Dreamcast when I got the. The, there's this next generation cover and it had the dreamcast and the prototype controller right in the front i was like oh wow i can't wait to touch this in real life even though it's months away so i would sit there and look at it and pretend i was playing it and put my thumbs on the buttons on the cover of the where the controller and just be like yeah. oh yeah i bet i'm doing it 
it's kind of like you You've know got like a fold out a fold out image and it like shows you how long the cord is <laughs> like now i'll put it over here this is where i'll plug it in and i'll just hold it over here on my lap oh yeah you're like the stereotypical teenage girl who's like kissing the poster of the All boy right. band but you're like holding the controller <laughs> right what like was the, the paper controller. controller like was it different i'm not I'm not remembering um, this. The, the the biggest change is that the start button is was round. They oh. the prototype one is round. They eventually, you know, made it that triangle. Did you read the article recently where they explained why it's triangle shaped? Uh no. It uh, so the Dreamcast has a little triangle on the device, right? Yeah. And and that's pointed at you because that's the game coming out and the oh, internet wow. coming out to you. And then the triangle on the controller points the other way because that's you going back to the console whoa that's high concept yeah they should have they really said think that. about this stuff wow hard yeah. to believe that they considered a circle at one time what could that have possibly meant some garbage idea i'm sure <laughs> i do remember I reading that person maybe it was fired <laughs> in egm at the time or something else but that they spent a lot they at some point they made a point of saying that they spent a lot on the marketing firm that helped them come up with the spiral logo <laughs> wow it's yeah. a good logo, but I can't imagine how much money that you would actually need to spend. They wanted you to be more impressed, being like, listen, I know it looks simple, but we spent millions of dollars in research to show that this is the best symbol. And well, what do you say to that? Well, you know what? how the story to this went, right? So they 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 went to this famous designer, right? Uh-huh. And 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 they said, make this make this logo for us. And he says, oh, yeah, sure, I'll do it. I'll get right on that. And so they come to him like a couple weeks later and they're like, you got the logo yet? And they're like, and he's like, no, no, I don't got the logo yet. And then a couple more weeks, you, you got that logo? You know, we're spending a lot of money on this. And he's like, no, no, I don't have the logo. And then finally, it's, you know, it's the last minute. And they're like, we have to have the logo now. We've given you all this money. You know, what has, what's been going on? And then he just took out a piece of paper and he drew a perfect spiral uh-huh. just bam just nailed it in one shot and he gave it to them and wow. and then they're like what but what were you doing all of this time and then he's got like all of these spirals that are just you know <laughs> just not just like wiggly they're not perfect he spent all that time getting it just right just right yeah that's and that's why you see the animation at the start of the dreamcast um of the spiral coming out because they uh-huh. were so impressed with the way he drew it Honestly, I really thought that was going to end in like a dirty punchline or something for a minute. I was just like, I don't know where this is going to go. Yeah. <laughs> I sort of had that rhythm of like, I don't know. If I'd planned uh, it out better, I would have come up with um, like an Uzumaki kind of horror angle. Would have been pretty great. But yeah, uh, that's all right. Hey, we uh, well, we can fix it in post. <laughs> <laughs> uh that's interesting i didn't know that i it's I, not true I, I i uh i adapted it from a story about um that's also probably not true about um kanji calligraphy being used in a logo it, they, okay uh, kanji so none of that do it. yeah none of none it of what you said was true well it is a story about kanji that may or may not be true okay um, but it, it it's uh it, it does sound kind of truthy doesn't it yeah moving on uh <laughs> the next game uh is from activision Auto combat insanity hits overdrive. Hmm. Auto combat like cars. They didn't put twisted metal on it. They wouldn't have done that, right? That no. doesn't seem right. But no. they did put Vigilante Eight Second Defense. Oh, oh, no, that's okay. a game I remember the name of. I've got like a mental image of a black car, like no. a no it's a bus. It's a, a bus. bus. What a bus! A, a gray bus. A gray bus, huh? Yeah, it's um Yeah, that sounds fun. Well now putting myself in the uh you know, the place of prime rental that I'm, you know, like a little kid, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, a gray bus. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty appealing. I gotta I gotta look this up. Right. Vigilante eight Vigilante justice time. Eight. Uh, second offense. Second right. What was the first oh. offense? Well, there was a, an earlier game, I think. Oh. Oh, it depending on the the there's PlayStation versions of this game also. And some of them use a yellow school bus and others use the gray. But the first game uses a yellow school bus. Okay. Yeah. This right. game is a buy. 
I'm telling you. Okay. Uh, I bought. I did buy this game. It did I you still have it? this game. Oh. And um, it uh, is a. It's a fun multiplayer. You're driving around and you're shooting rockets. Hmm. Right. Well, you would it have had to, to wait be on everything. Came out in December. There's a Nintendo 64. It came version. out in December. That's, yeah, it's a PlayStation it Two version. Are you sure? Your list is interesting. This I guess list. you're just reading Look at it this list. Me. I am reading it straight from the source. This is a, a paid advertisement. Sega paid for this this media in this magazine. Well, it does it say says at the top games available fall ninety nine. Are you saying that Sega lied? Well, maybe it was delayed and it didn't come out until <laughs> December. But yeah, that's what it says. December twenty wow. second. Um, I was a Sega diehard. I don't want anything with Sony cooties on it, so I'm going to pass. How dare they? Um, Wow. A pass, a buy. What say you, David? Oh, you bought it? I mean, I think at first it came to me via a pirated disc, and then later I bought it. I would pirate it. it, I'll say that. Um, Okay. We're going to go back to pirate. There's, There's a flying car. There's something going on there. Yeah. I don't know if I'd rent it, but <laughs> yeah. Well, wow, this... all right. Okay. Yeah. Should we should we roll through these? We we should yeah. we should do some rolling because all yeah. right. Yeah. Sega. I'll be driving games. <laughs> yeah. uh, a Sega game. The ooh, quote ooh. is the Men in Blue, Black uh-huh. and Blue. Do you know what game? Black, black and Blue. The Men in Blue, Black and Blue. It's not. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be a. So it's it's kind of like a police game, but kind of a beat 'em up kind of game. That's what it sounds like. It's not Blue Stinger, is it? It, <laughs> it is not. Be. And it's not like they didn't put Virtua Cop on this thing that quickly, right? It's, uh, oh, no. It is Dynamite Cop. Oh, Dynamite. Oh, oh Dynamite. that wasn't a, that wasn't a launch game either. That was a that was no. a few months later. That was it a few months. Later. Games available fall ninety nine. Right. Do you I want? I can't believe. That they lied in this issue, but uh, well, Dynamite Cop came out. Yeah, that was in November, yeah. so I guess I, uh, it's technically still yeah. fall. Wow, it's, that was in my list of games that I would like to maybe talk about. So I put the date down for that one in my notes. Yeah, ooh, right. Dynamite Cop is, you know what? I've still never properly played it, but it was on a demo disc. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah, played it properly on that demo it. disc over and over again because i'm like this is fun same but i never got it yeah same. never this, even rented it do but you remember you know, do you remember it, what well i i bought it um oh because it was because it was oh, great oh. and it, isn't know, it the sequel to uh die hard arcade that's right because yeah. the japanese version of die hard arcade was dynamite deca which is uh-huh. right uh dynamite cop basically and then for the sequel they didn't have one of bother to attach it to Die Hard anymore so they were just like okay this is dynamite cop we'll just call it that um yeah. do you remember what the official dreamcast magazine said about dynamite cop the best game on that demo disc that we all played over and over again uh no i don't they i don't remember their exact words but they said it sucks they gave what? it like a three out of ten How and they said don't waste your time whoa play zombie revenge instead which i believe they gave a six or something is it because uh, of the, it didn't have was it about the light gun? Well, well, no. There was Zombie Revenge was the um, was the beat 'em up, right? In the um, House of the Dead style. Uh, game. I don't uh, recall if it was actually connected. It it right. It, it was sort of. I remember them pitching it as like, oh, this takes place between one and two, maybe. But I don't yeah. think it actually has anything to do with House of the Dead. It's just yeah. a zombie game. I think um, that was a demo on that disc as well, and I remember not spending very much time with it. It was, I mean, you could not hit a person with a fish in that game. Right. But you would hear the word bullets a lot in that game. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. Um, right. I'm just sitting here going, whoa, because, right, they really just gave it a three? That's so Yeah, rude. they hated it. They were like, wow. this game is not worth your time. It is the worst kind of just an yeah. arcade game that's meant to suck a few quarters out of you and then and then be discarded. They had right. no love for Dynamite Cop in that magazine right. which magazine official dreamcast magazine the sega one about disc- a sega game yeah isn't that right. something yeah i yeah hmm. you know what we could have done and it didn't occur to me until this very second the last issue of that magazine has them ranking every dreamcast game 
Uh-huh. Um, it's way too late to do that now in this episode. I have those magazines. If you tell me what's on the cover, I could probably find it pretty quickly. I feel like it is it Spider was Spider Man the last one? I think I know exactly where that is. If that's true, that it's Spider Man. I have seen that issue recently in this stack of magazines that my mom, shout out mom, sent me Whoa. from the basement of her house to now occupy space in mine. Um, <laughs> Dynamite Cop is a rental for me because I, I, yeah, I just don't know enough to, uh-huh. to, to, to definitely buy it, but I would rent it, probably have fun, maybe buy it later or steal it. I mean, that, that sounds right. Like it w- it was, I had so much fun with that demo disc, but I never bothered to get mm-hmm. it. So you have was, to start with the rental, but yeah. I feel like it's right on the edge where you could, you could buy it. Yeah. Like I said, and, it was a buy for me, but I think it is kind of like a, like a, you found it at KB toys. Was KB toys still around then on the yeah. $20 rack? Do not yeah. miss it for $20. Yeah. There's a, yeah, we still have one hiding in the mall. Don't yeah. exist anymore. Where'd it go? Now business. <laughs> Uh, okay, is, everybody locked is, in for Dynamite Cop. Yep. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I was just looking at a scan of the issue with Spider-Man on the cover, and there are photographs of, of men wearing presidential candidate heads in piles of mashed potatoes. Oh, wow. What are they advertising? Uh, Virtua Sega, Tennis. The Sega Spud Dive 2K. Oh, um, not even a, not a game. No, no, it is an event because I remember they they did this. um, They did this three times once they advertised Sonic R. And then I forget what the second time was. I think it was for Dreamcast. Basically, oh, if you won the dive where you you jump into 2000 gallons of creamy mashed potatoes and find the letter Sega, you would win a Dreamcast and all and any every single Dreamcast game ever released for life, which sounds great, except six months later <laughs> well that's still a lot of good games oh yeah yeah it's, it's... so far we haven't talked about any no we, we haven't you've been going some. down this this <laughs> list and i'm like yeah next two are skips too uh so you maybe know, we go th- through them quickly yeah. tnn motorsports hardcore heat yeah, by, okay. a, from asc games any any ASC? anyone want to not pass on pass. Uh, uh-huh. hardcore off-road racing that's tnn TNN are so restricted motorsports yeah. w- SM, which is different from TM. Uh, and then it says hardcore heat, which is TM. Wait, was that two games or one game? One game. Okay. TNN are motorsports SM hardcore heat TM. Right. Oh, I can't. Okay. Right. Trademark. I can't say I. No, I don't care about that. Okay. The next <laughs> game is air force Delta target locked bingo. This is from. Hey, it's from Konami. It's in fact Whoa. the only Konami game on the list. Huh. Oh. So if you see the Konami logo included in the potpourri of logos of the developers that supported the Sega Dreamcast launch, remember that Konami did technically support, but it was with Air Force Delta yeah. and probably it didn't come out on 9999. I have to it say the box out. art for this game is not no. um, it's a launch title. Oh, it's it is. not a winner. Not a winner. Uh, right. On the box art, like it is, it is not an attractive looking first cover. person airplane shooter. It kind of looks like a, an afterburner kind of game, but you know, yeah, it's it's sounds not cool. afterburner. Yeah, it, it might be cool. Um, well, let's... rental. I'm gonna rent it. Are you gonna rent it? Okay, you rent it, and I'll pirate it. And if it's good, maybe I'll rent it. <laughs> I'm gonna. This this is a, a game that I'm gonna read an article about. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's a good. That's a good category too. Because yeah, I would read an article about. Yeah. No, All right. I wouldn't. At some point, I would read. I would, I'll tell you what. I'd read an article about this next game, which is Sega Rally Two. Oh, Ooh. from Sega. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rain, sleet, snow, and 350 HP engines. Horsepower. 350 yeah. horsepower engines. Yeah. I'm going to acknowledge that this is definitely a buy for some people, but for me, it probably would have been a rental. To so, pass with the same acknowledgement. Some people are interested, but I'm not super. I, I I don't remember if I I rented Maybe some rent. dream, uh, some Saturn racing games. I think I kind of got the mm-hmm. the Sega Rally out of my system that way because they're graphical way. like showpieces is the mm-hmm. yeah appeal right. Well, some um, racing games if if a racing game clicks with me, I'm gonna 
play it for a long time. You you know about me and Mario Kart Eight, do, 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 do. yeah. Um, Michael's uh, yeah. Michael's a <clears throat> speed devil in <laughs> speed Mario Kart Eight Deluxe. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. I mean, like I own it. GX, so. Outrun Two. Uh, there's some other racing games that I've really got into over time, but you know, right. it's got to be the special racing game for me personally. Yeah, uh, I do own Sega Rally, but I, I bought that way after the fact. Um, so at the time, I would say it's a rental. Um, yeah. because it's, it's not Daytona. <laughs> Let's continue. Yeah. Good okay. on this list. Let's do it. We're starting to get to the games that are, I would say, interesting. Okay. Uh, yes. It's t- it's taken almost an hour to get there, but right. We're... Is this an extra length episode? <laughs> Maybe. What are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> you got time. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's see. Um, Resident Evil Code Veronica from Capcom. You'll beg to keep the lights on. Code Veronica was a day one buy. I don't that think a it was a nine. I don't, yeah, think, I don't think it was. Yeah. No, I think no. That was December. Even I think that was a Christmas gift. Yeah. I personally was not that into the Resident Evil games, so that's a rental for me. But mm. um, uh, but it's definitely not like a, you know. I'm, I mean, I'm definitely going to rent it. I'm going to read some articles about right. it. Right. This list, not that pass. game did not come out until March of 2000. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, hilarious. At least yeah, in the United States. This was, yeah. I was like, yeah, this was this later. This list is weird. I mean, there were plenty of things that were uh, announced. You know, like t- the, the first Dreamcast game that was revealed uh, was D2. Um, wow. Which... um was not released until August of 2000. So it completely... Kenji Eno? Yes, yeah, yes. It was okay. uh, the what same a, guy, what, D, what a guy. Enemy Zero. Did, was, that, was that because like he just announced it because he was a crazy person who hated Sony? Um, I, I I think so. I mean, and... he, he was just like, I'm all in. I'm on the Dreamcast. We're going to enjoy this. He also made a, a game on the Dreamcast. It's, what, uh, it's for blind people? Right. The, the, yeah, the audio-only game. Yeah, The audio-only game, which... Is, I've never played it, but it sounds. I haven't either. It's got like the cover is like a a blue sky. Kind yeah, of image. yeah, yeah. I like don't he, remember the name of it. He made some some like he made experimental games. He made games that you could say that's definitely just art. Like he's he's wilding out there. Yeah, I've never played the original D. Um, I have. Oh, right. Did you, yeah. Um, Do you know what the D stands for? Doof. <laughs> Sorry, my mind immediately went doof doof. <laughs> to rude uh no what does the d stand for it's a spoiler so if you don't want to know turn off the podcast now or skip ahead like 10 seconds or whatever the okay. d stands for dracula Ooh. <laughs> oh wow that's unexpected this, that's, that is unexpected. that wouldn't yeah. have been in my yeah it was feud it was guesses. it was the the tone of the game is not like it's it's a horror game but it's not like a um like a you know, like a Dracula kind of game, you'd think. And mm-hmm. then when it when the game reveals Dracula, Ooh. it was uh, it's it's kind of like oh, wow, what a what a twist! This Which game time? is kind of fun and stupid. <laughs> Speaking of games that are fun and stupid, this game that we're currently playing that I tossed out as like a I little think we mark that playing we're... it. I think despite its inaccuracy, it... I think it's a. <laughs> It's a sort of an interesting list of games that we would not have mentioned otherwise. Yeah, I think that we should roll with it. Also, it's because it's like this is what was presented with Dreamcast. Like these aren't yes. all the launch titles, but this is what's in your mind. Yes. Although this I don't know if D two is on that list. Um, uh, spoiler: It is not. <laughs> it is not on this list. Okay. Uh, no. But um, did anyone talk about in Shenmue? The United States? Um, Shenmue what is not on this list. What what what'd you say, Michael? Did D two even come out in the United States? I, it did. Uh, okay. I know that there were a couple scenes that were um, censored, toned mm-hmm. down because yeah. there's. I know there's there's a couple things. Well, you know, you're you're online. You're like, I'm gonna read it, and they're like, Whoa! Did you know they got rid of this one bit in D two? And you're like, That's Ooh. in a video game. I wanna, Amazing. I want to pose this question. Okay. As we as we continue through the list yes because we we began the first hour of this Mm -hmm. episode saying we're celebrating the sega dreamcast launch what a great launch (laughs) so many great launch games every it was huge huge world stopped and then so far 
got a bunch of horse shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe you should have started so, from the top. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Hey. But it depends. You know, if you came in the other side of the store, this uh-huh. is what you were seeing. This yeah. is what you were left with. This is, because this is a few months later. This, this is, is the, a, the Dreamcast experience. I, I have <laughs> um I did kind of prepare mentally, like I had kind of thought about what I wanted to say about the Dreamcast. Um uh-huh. so if we when we get to the end of this, I can cut to Great, we'll have a good soliloquy. We'll have a good soliloquy. Okay. Uh, But for now, uh, what what do we got? Please wax poetic about Fighting Force 2. Oh, no. The fate of the world is in your fist from Eidos. This was the game that is the sequel to the game that wasn't Streets of Rage 4. Oh. Fighting Force was the the first. Right. I cannot believe it did well enough to get a sequel. I had no idea there was a Fighting Force 2. Right. Released December 22nd. <laughs> that should be the next that should that should be an open question each time of actual launch game or fake launch game. We yeah. have mentioned a couple actual launch titles. Like you did Not say No, you said Air Force Delta. That was one. Mm-hmm. Um, most of most of the ones I've mentioned have not been actual launch titles. Now, these have no. also been uh, a I'll, lot of Western games, which is very interesting. Right. I think we'll, we'll the, go the, through the Sega of America must have had some special focus on. We think yeah. Americans are going to like these. Right. Well, let, let's yeah. yeah keep going. We're gonna. Okay. Let's just. All right. So we'll. we'll, we'll but I mean, you got to say pass. Oh, Fighting you know. Force. Oh. I don't care. I, okay. Hey, right. so I'll just let right. it be known that you don't care. Yeah. I'm going to rent it or read an article about it. Yeah, I'll um, go with article, but since I didn't even, I forgot yeah. it existed. Clearly, I wasn't interested. Yeah, so, I'm gonna not now, now that I know, I'm kind of like, oh, if I could have rented it, I would have wanted to know. I would have wanted yeah, to know but, what this not Streets right, of Rage. If was I, if like. I knew that could be Streets of Rage Five, maybe yeah. I'd. I'm holding no space for it in my mind, heart, or although I think I heard what? that the first um, Fighting Force was really bad. I don't know oh. if that's true. Okay, this but, next game is from Capcom, okay. and the quote is: "This totally interactive fighter." Rocks. Rocks oh. is in all quotes. Ooh, well, this is Power Stone. Of course, it sure is Power Stone. Stone. And that, that is a spy. That's yes, it is. Yeah, that's there's a, there's no doubt. That was also on the Dreamcast demo disc, and that's one of the demos I played a lot. Yeah, I, I have to admit, if it if if I have the if I've got lots and lots of money, it's definitely a buy. Otherwise, right. it's a rent. Right, yes. but it's Good a point. but it's a, it's, but it's a rent for sure. Like, hey, soon, everybody, we are going to rent this game, and we are going to have fun this week. Okay. It's 1999. You're 27 years old. You probably and you're you are not married. You're a swinging bachelor. Oh yeah, right. What do you need for your pad? But what's your budget? Stone. Is it a thousand dollars? Are you prepared to drop one thousand nineteen ninety nine dollars? Wow. To get all to of it. Yeah, to make sure that you can rent <laughs> Dynamite Cop, Sega right. Bass Fishing. Sega Rally Two, right. I mean, and these games. Power Stone, right? Without ladies, and we're not even. I mean, we still got like half the list, and they're right. If we could figure I out, I believe Power Stone was a launch game for real, right? I believe it was also. Is that right. true, David? Uh, Power Stone was a launch title, yes. Okay, and I'm gonna um, even say that, like, if it was like within the first couple weeks, that would probably still count. Like, that's like, like they'll say launch window these days, and it'll have come out like four months later. Six mm-hmm. months later, they'll call it launch window. Yeah. But if we had planned this out, we would have been like, "Here's a thousand dollars. Here's how much the Dreamcast and all its accessories uh, and, and yeah. games are. Figure it out." But only came up with it now. Yeah, <laughs> we're 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 improvising it, and we, um, yeah. I just thought we were going to be like, "Man, what was your favorite game?" Like, yeah, was, we're not. No, we, this, we went, we went, this went. This went. This you know. This took it took a little spiraling like, turn. It, it did. You really like right. Power Stone, it sounds yes. like. Do you want to say any words about Power Stone? Who? I, I'll say this about Power Stone, which is that I only recently acquired it to own. Mm-hmm. Um, it had eluded me, even though I knew to get it. I just didn't. And then it was harder to get. And then I just did. And finally, I w- uh, picked it up at like a retro game con. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I've played it a couple times. Right. I'm very excited for it coming to Switch. I'm mm-hmm. very excited to be able to play it again in a modern way and be able to play online with people. Power yes. Stone and Power Stone 2. Super thrilled about that. Free uh, from the shackles of the Dreamcast. <laughs> yeah. In this episode, celebrating the Dreamcast. Yeah. Is the Dreamcast the most overrated launch in the history <laughs> well, of gaming? I, I don't think it's over. Like, you haven't... There the are next some game good is Soul games. Calibur. The next game is Soul Calibur. That and is from Namco. 
hot chicks, massive weapons. I swear to God, that is the quote. <laughs> Hot Chicks, Massive Weapons is how they sold Soul Calibur, which you were about to be like, is one of the greatest fighting games. It's a work of art. It's yeah. such a deep, it, the combat system is unparalleled. The, the uh, Soul Calibur is my dick. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, no, but yeah. I, Especially that big eye. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, the one-eyed that monster. Was, that was the second game. <laughs> Brought Sonic Advent, got Sonic Adventure on the day, and yep. then... And then I got Soul Calibur like not that long after. I didn't even have was to wait. A, was that not a launch game? It was a launch game. Yeah. It came okay. out nine nine ninety nine. I'm I'm like I remember buying or getting Sonic Adventure day one. Ah, and then ah, ah, yes. I think I don't remember how I got Soul Calibur. I just remember it. It was pre owned, but it was only like two weeks old at that point. So I don't know who gave it back so quickly. Hmm. Hmm. Clearly, I'm, somebody who doesn't appreciate yeah. art or the mechanics wow i know for sure on launch day i got sonic adventure nfl Mm -hmm. 2k ready to rumble some people don't like arcade games they like 60 hour quests right so maybe they were like it's done but they're like they played through the game that it does it has that extensive like single player there's a huge map adventure mode maybe they maybe they didn't like it's um they they uh they saw like the soul caliber and that nightmare character. And they were like, Oh, this, these devilish oh, undertones scared. are making me uncomfortable. Mm. That could I'm be it. Trade this in for Sonic adventure. I, I was obsessed. I was obsessed with the lore, you know, because yeah, you yeah. all the descriptions and you're like, well, lizard man used to be a man, but now he's yeah. a lizard. How tragic. Voldo, Voldo <laughs> is the, the protector of the money pit. Oh yeah. yeah the money. <laughs> and now we're talking. Yeah. He loves that movie. Uh. Right. Who is your Who is your Soul Calibur main? Who I was uh, I was Ikaruga or no? What was his name? Uh, and then Mitsurushi. I was gonna say yeah, Mitsurugi. Mitsurugi. Oh yeah, he he's a Mitsurugi, the sword guy. But then the guy with this Kalik. Yeah, uh, Kalik. Ikaruga is a different game. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mitsurugi. He's in that. He's in Soul Calibur. Um, it's a me. It's a Rudy. It's a me. Right, Kilik. I I think is he ended up being my my go to because he's got the bow staff. Right, I love yeah. that bow staff. I was Great just bow like, staff. Yeah. I played quite a bit of Soul Calibur two on the uh, the GameCube mm-hmm. with Link. That yeah, was pretty fun. Also a nice looking game. Soul Calibur. I can't remember if I got it. It. I don't. I remember for sure those three games were launch purchases. I think Soul Calibur came later. Mm. Even though it did law, lo- yeah, with, but you got it later. I got it later, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I, um, yeah. when so when I got this, the oh, Dreamcast, go um, a friend and I, we both got Dreamcast day one, and I got Sonic, oh. and he got Soul Calibur. So, oh, so you could do a swap. Do we were set. Wow, to do it. That is, I bet. And then you really showed it to that uh, college video <laughs> game owner guy. He didn't have Soul Calibur either. Like what? Wait, when well, did because Soul he got the Japanese and... launch games. Hey, you're right. When did Soul Calibur come out in Japan? It came out, oh, not that, August of 99. So, yeah, yeah I could see, like, uh, who cares? It's going to be out here in a month. Yeah. And then he drinks. I, I, the, I kind of get the impression that his Dreamcast rental plan with the Japanese one was kind of a dud. So oh. he really should have just got Sonic Adventure, and I would have rented it from him, like, four times. Yeah, he. It was a huge fumble on his part. He yeah. Doesn't, yeah. Hot is, chicks, is, massive weapons. Soul that, Calibur. That is such a wild descriptor. Yeah. It's true, though. One of the seminal Dreamcast They're not games. all huge weapons. Um, <laughs> well, there's those tiny little tiny sword. Yeah, Maxi had that little segmented yeah. nunchuck thing. Oh, yeah, I love the nunchuck. I mean, that's pretty big, but it's not huge. Right. Yeah. And, and, that's I mean, I the know... objectionable part, though, the massive weapons. Not Maxi the... was a high seas dandy. I remember that as part of his description. Hey, look, you know, uh, yeah, there's a... a I mean, Ivy's in the game, so yeah. was she in that game? Wasn't she? In oh the yeah, game one? she's in that game. Okay. Oh, Ivy's the Ivy's in that game, okay. and so right. it's um, Alexandria. E- what was her name? Helena. You think? No. Are you thinking of the angel? Not angel, but the the sort of the Grecian. Let's see. Um, let's just go. Sophia. Uh, I, Sophia. Sophia. So Sophia. that's it. That's, yeah, that's yes. who I'm trying to say. That's exactly. Sophia right. is the character from Toshinden. Right. right. Yeah. Right. That was another, uh, another game with a lot of characters. Some of them sexy. Some of them, <laughs> right? Well, that 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 was just the style of the time. That's all you needed. 
Now, right. this next game is from yes. Sega. Mm-hmm. Whoa! And the tagline is Bio Mechanized Pain for Your <sighs> Pleasure. What? And it's for a game called Slave Zero. Oh, oh that was Slave not Zero. a launch game either. No, but, uh, no. <laughs> but that was a pretty good game. I rented it. Yeah, I had I had fun with Slave Zero. Um, yeah. That's definitely worth a rental. The, the um, fun thing about this game is that you're a huge robot with giant yeah. claw hands, and you could pick up tiny cars and throw them like they were soda cans. Yeah. And you that's could, like my big memory of this. And if um, you saw people, you could just step on them. doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, they don't yeah. do anything to you. Uh, yeah, that came out in November, so it is within the fall window. But yes. definitely rental tier. I'll agree yeah. there. But it was a, it was like fun rental. Yeah, um, I'll the, read an article about it. And, yeah. And oh, okay. Like, well, how can yeah. they call a game? <laughs> what are they doing? Is that the okay? Yeah, they're gonna get uh, us demonetized. Blue um, Stinger: Survive blue. and the Planet Just Might from Activision. Mm. Yeah, that's that, that I have read articles about it, and I've never rented it. So I, at right. this point, I just have to be honest. I mean, it has doesn't it have Ryan Drummond in it. I Sonic? believe so. Yeah. So yeah. Sonic's in the game. His voice, anyway. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Blue Stinger was one of the games where they were like, this is like, this is the adventure title. This is this is the Resident Evil for the yeah. Dreamcast, even though Dreamcast got its own Resident Evil. Um, so it was it was advertised a whole lot yeah. before the Dreamcast came out. But then once it did, no one cared. <laughs> yeah, I care, like I say, I cared enough to rent it. I was very curious how Blue Stinger was going to. Yeah, go. because- and I th- it was made by Climax, wasn't it? uh <laughs> maybe it it definitely seemed like oh this is the game that's going to show off the graphical capabilities of the dreamcast like this is but soul Calibur did it a lot better i think in terms of like visual fidelity um definitely yeah, i yeah. think a the... rental just based on its concept but and because sonic's in it but I w- yeah, don't need to buy is, it. Is Sonic actually in it? it you're, we're just talking about the voice actor, right? I'm just talking about Ryan Drummond. Because but I just that means you know, Sonic. He's in uh, the uh, Bring It On because the, the reason, Ryan Drummond's the reason in that, so Sonic's in it. The reason why I mentioned Climax, this is part of why I was interested in it, is because okay. they're the guys who did Landstalker and Dark Savior, and Landstalker, oh. of course, has a Sonic cameo in it. Oh wait, oh. no, I'm thinking of no, I'm wrong. I'm thinking of Crusader of Senti. I'm off way off. But How much are... disinformation are you bringing to the podcast this week, Michael? A, a lot, apparently. It's, it's a anyway, good... Landstalker, Dark Savior, great pedigree. Um, had to Hi. check out Blue Stinger. Uh, it wasn't that kind of game. Too bad. Uh, well. All right, then. Let's go on. Unless okay, you... Fine. Yeah, no, uh, right. Uh, what did Blue you Stinger want? was just that the the appeal of it was that it was like the the sort of Resident Evil type game yes. before Code Veronica came. So yeah. it's even kind of weirder that they're both here on the same list of games available fall 99. Their words, right. not mine. Yeah, that's kind of like saying that like, hey, you can get this thing now, but there'll be right. something. It was a launch title. On later and you know, Blue Stinger was there from day one. Maybe that's what you really want. This next game's from Sega. Ooh. And it says laying rubber international style. <laughs> you already did Sega Rally. What would yeah. be? Is you know? it MSR? No, no, it's, nope. like, it's yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is. Sega Sports Kart Racing. Sega Sports Kart Racing. Yeah. What? C A R T, and it gets its own trademark. I uh, I don't think I know what that is. Apparently, it's a launch game from Sega themselves. And it's cart with a C? With a C. It's not Sega Sports Flag to Flag. Maybe they retitled it, but this says Sega Sports TM, C-A-R-T, TM, Racing. C-A-R-T. C-A-R-T. Cart. Okay, Wait, yeah, okay yeah. Sega. I think it was released as cart flag to flag. And according to this, it came out in March of 1999. Okay. Okay. That must be a Japanese or an arcade release. Yes, it was released as flag to flag. Like I, okay, not that I know anything about it, but it was a launch title in the United States. What the? Well, well there is. I do not. Yeah. Wow. I just was it yeah. not called that? It wasn't called Sega Sports Kart Racing in the uh, U.S. I don't it, think so. No, it was, it was called Flag to Flag, known in Japan as Super Speed Racing. Right, um, but in the U.S., say I'm a big fan of kart racing or yeah. just the Sega Sports brand. Yeah, 
I go to the store, I say, hey, give me some of that Sega Sports trademark, cart trademark, racing. Give me some of that. Yeah. And they'll say, what are you talking about, kid? Yeah. Right. It, it is weird because it's uh, it, a video game adaptation of the now defunct open wheel American racing series championship auto racing teams. So the title screen has that the cart logo for this racing group that doesn't exist anymore. But yeah, it was just called flag to flag. Well, and it's not really cart racing, is it? It's because it, it, it looks more like a F1 racing kind of thing from the looks of yeah. the vehicles. Right, it's called carts it because that's just the, the name of the group. If that's oh, their acronym. Okay. They're being clever. Yeah, I get it. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, All right. I'll rent it because it's Sega, but I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> this is a this is a, a pass for me. I'm going to read yeah, something about I mean, it and I'm going to learn how I, I can dismiss this game. The um, My mental image when you said this, that it was a Sega sports game, I was like, Sega sports kart racing. I'm like, what is there? Sega sports soapbox derby. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. Just wh- oh, well. what else? What else have they got in there that I've never heard of? This is yeah, really what do we something. Got? Yeah, let's keep on going down this list. Yeah. All right. We're in our yeah. top uh, almost 10. Uh, NFL Blitz 2000. No oh. refs, no rules, no mercy from Midway. No okay. guessing on this one. Um, so that was I, NFL Blitz then, yeah? Yeah. Yes. NFL Blitz 2000. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would... See, personally, I'd pass on it because if I'm going to get an NFL game, there's another one that came out the same day, and yep. that's oh, the no. obvious choice. Oh, so, I probably already own it on Nintendo 64, and uh, I'm right. going to pass on it. Or oh, play no. it in the arcade. You know, like, it's fun in the arcade, but... Right? Yeah. It, is it, is a, it, it is a fun game. It's just oh, that it's... I, you know, probably already have it. Yeah. Man, I don't really play sports games, so I'm going to pass on this. But I I feel a lot of sympathy for NFL Blitz being a, a fun <laughs> game that was beloved by many and a game where, like, an ambulance could run over a football player, if I understand correctly. Right. Is that the one? Uh, if... I think that was a different one but yeah i mean it was you could anyway, it, just it, do a lot of cheap hits it's a tragic story of the <clears throat> i watched that yeah. video recently about how um about the history of madden and how ea ran away with the nfl license and you know all of the really fun football games china just just they just cannot get a break no although you know that video kind of turned me around from the the usual view of like oh yeah bring back nfl 2k Mm -hmm. because they were like well really ea invented like this entire genre of Mm -hmm. video game way back so maybe i agree (laughs) you're right yeah yeah there's There's one of those bmu beeps for you (laughs) i want if ea wants to bring back well no they shouldn't bring back mutant league because some somebody spun off from them and made their own knockoff Kickstarter. They should make a football game just starring Sonic. Yeah. I like it. Sonic, Sonic Sports. and Mario at the NFL. <laughs> uh, oh. Okay, next is a Sega game. At the Super Bowl. Uh, paint the walls with bodily fluids. Oh, well, it's not Splatoon. <laughs> Are you sure? This is a <laughs> Sega game? Uh, bodily fluids? Paint the walls with bodily fluids. Is, is, it, is, it, is, it, um, is it a House of the Dead? It sure is. It's the oh, House of the of Dead course. too. Another okay. not actually a launch title, but no, no, no. no? Yeah, uh, I, House I of the Dead two was no. Wait, it was. Oh, no, cool. it is. Wow. Yeah, that so is they, a launch have, title. Do they have a light gun at launch? Then I don't remember that. I I don't know if they had the light. I I have House of the Dead two, but I didn't have a light gun, so I had to use Same. the D pad. Same. Yeah. So it must not have, because otherwise one of us you think would have done it, right? Yeah. You'd think. Um, You'd think so. And they didn't have the keyboard yet, so you couldn't do typing of the dead either. No. Yeah, I do have the keyboard. Yeah. And the, the keyboard. arcade stick. Mm-hmm. The keyboard's good. The keyboard's fun. Um, I did pirate typing of the dead. Sorry, Sega. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, House of the Two. You know what? I had a lot of fun with that game. I rented it at the time. I own it now. I think... I would put it on a buy list just because it's it's fun, especially with a friend, like two player. Yeah. I own it. Like gun or no, it's still fun even with the yeah. t- controller. I would have rented it personally, but you know. That's fair. That's just that's fair. Yeah. Uh Capcom. No disrespect meant. 
is the <laughs> next game uh, publisher, and the description is Wolverine versus Mega Man. Nuff said. Oh, so it's Marvel versus Capcom. That I mean, is exactly right. I don't think that was a launch game either. No, Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of Superheroes. The first one is October 7th, so less than a month, but okay. still within like yeah. a respectable launch window. Yeah. Um, that is number seven on their list. We're going at this. Okay. I mean, the bottom. It's it's good, but I, I like the second one better. You know. I was gonna say yeah. It's it's kind of overshadowed by by two Marvel Cap two. Right. So at the time, because two doesn't exist. Right. I feel like it would be a buy, but in retrospect, mm -hmm. it's sort of a maybe a rental because there's a better one coming. I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say in this fictional yeah. world where we're 27 and swinging bachelors. If, I'm, if, I'm, that, if I'm that swinging bachelor impressing the ladies with all my games, I'm definitely getting Marvel versus Capcom. Oh, okay, right, because the ladies <laughs> love. And I'm Wolverine. gonna I'm gonna like pull out Psylocke, and I'm gonna be like, see, this is what you should be like. <laughs> she'll love that yeah, yeah. Uh, in this fictional world why not yeah uh, yeah, and, and, yeah. <laughs> all right uh okay so yeah i did own this game and then i sold it oh. so i guess in a way it's like i did rent it right expensively long-term rental long-term rental yeah that uh that's also what i call my wife am i right folks <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Wow, don't, this, don't this, kill me this episode's Ashman. taking some turns yeah that's right I'm just kidding uh just kidding uh folks folks let's move on we're at uh, number six on the list yeah yeah and this number is from six. interplay remember oh. interplay oh yeah okay. yeah gadgets weapons and a robotic dog oh the that's game MDK2. is two that sure is mdk oh too. mdk and that was the, and there was not a long demo title. the or, no. or I, I played a demo for that one a lot. Okay. I didn't yes, buy it. Though. There was I a... think I also played a demo of it and I forget how, but yeah. Yeah, it was on a it was on a demo disc. Yeah. You know, if yeah. you bought all those magazines. Uh, MDK two was released March 29th, two thousand. Definitely outside the fall oh, yes. window. But wow. it is a it's a fun game. I, I feel like this launch holds up to no scrutiny whatsoever. <laughs> It has right. Sonic Adventure and Bupkis. No, we'll when, when we're, we're done with this list, we'll go. We'll be like, okay, like a yeah, quick. We'll fire. see how much we how, how much money did you spend? It's not that you have a thousand dollars. You have right. to be like, oh, can I buy it? Well, we're supposed to be it's keeping how, track. <laughs> eh, we'll we'll tally it at the end. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll figure it out. All right. Okay, so MDK two um, is a uh, a reluctant pass for me. I just don't. Think you know now that now that we're talking about money, it's like I just don't. I don't know if I can justify it. Well, it's definitely rent it. a rental for yeah. me. I okay. didn't actually rent it, but I would have if I'd been given the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. I feel that way too. Rental then. Okay. Uh, all right. Next up it's is from Sega. The, ladies the same way as Marvel. From, uh, who? Well, you could tell them what MDK stands for after you tell them what D two stands for. Oh yeah. You oh. know, hey. Uh, I don't know if you know about mdk but uh murder death kill <laughs> dracula <laughs> murder dracula uh oh. sega now with 150 percent more pain and suffering that's uh when the dreamcast was uh, this is number five on their list the of it's already figuring out how to beat you in games you haven't even seen games yeah, we, available this, fall is, this, is this virtual fighter three Yes, Can Virtua Fighter Three TB. Yeah, TB. Virtua Fighter Three T. Touchy butt. <laughs> Touchy. I have, to, I have to say the TB suffix right. at this point does not does not make me think of positive things. No, uh, <laughs> tuberculosis. Uh, I, <laughs> tablespoons. Right. That's three tablespoons. Right. Virtua Fighter Three. That that was something that everyone assumed would be a launch title, but it was actually delayed for a month and was released October nineteenth. 19th so i can excuse this advertisement because it really seemed like it was going to be a launch title but it just didn't happen but sega virtual fighter i love virtual fighter 2 I, I i don't hold virtual fighter 3 as high but i would have at the time if i was 27 and had a thousand dollars would have put that on the buy list because yeah, it's it, like it I seems need the like sega a high fighter. priority game right Although I feel like that's that's three fighters on a buy list: Virtual Fighter Three, Power yeah. Stone, Soul Calibur. But they're all different, so it's fine. Next up is number four on the uh -huh. list of twenty-four, which makes it number six on the list of twenty-six. Oh, okay. Uh, so this is from Midway again, and uh, this ain't no pleasure cruise. 
uh, Hydro Thunder. Michael gets it. Again. Oh, wow. Whoa, Michael. I just, I just know, I just have a lot of these names floating around in my head. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. it's either it or this is just some other water some other game. racing. This game. one was a launch game. This yes, one it was, was a nine nine ninety nine. Yes, it was. Yeah, and um, uh, this one I, is actually a it's pronounced Hydrothunder. <laughs> Get out! Get out of here! Uh, I would rent it in the hypothetical version where this is all available. Yeah, I've seen and I've read enough. Actually, I've read nothing about it. I've just seen the one screenshot enough times. Yeah, you're like, this looks like it could be fun. Yeah, I agree with you. This is a definite rental. Mm -hmm. Rental in our 27 swinging bachelor days of 1999. (laughs) (laughs) And it's a it's a I'm curious how it compares with Wave Race on the Nintendo 64. Also Mm -hmm. a launch game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, launch window pretty beloved. Um, Wave Race 64, not one of the two launch games for Nintendo 64, but was in the launch window. It was, one, it was oh, very, was very oh, quickly yeah, yeah. released. Right, after right. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. It was just close. Yeah. Right. All right. So anyway, I didn't personally own Wave Race, but you know. But how about Did Hydro you own Thunder? Hydro Thunder? I, no, I've never played that at all. Okay. But I, but I feel like I would rent it maybe. Okay. Okay. We got a rent maybe and a rent and a rent. Yeah. Okay. And all right. Next up is from Acclaim. Hold for applause. Uh, And uh, it says, Rocket Board So Fast Your Eyes Bleed. This is how they're advertising. Which game? Rocket Board? Wow. Rocket Board So Fast Your Eyes Bleed. that's that weird tricking type game. Yes, it is. I can't think of the actual name, though. Tricky? No. That's a snowboarding game. Yeah. I like that. This is Trick Style. Trick Style. Right. That was also, I believe, if not on the pack-in demo disc it was on one of the first official dreamcast magazine ones played the demo a lot but never bothered (laughs) beyond that it it looks like it could be fun but i feel like if you really want that sort of game you're gonna get tony hawk well it's a hoverboard though yeah when when are you gonna get another chance to do a hoverboard you're gonna have to wait years for sonic riders to come out oh that's right this, I don't want my eyes to bleed, so I'm going to pass on this game. <laughs> uh, may, it, it might be a rental. I, that's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to go pass on this one. You know, yeah, let's just pass it. Uh, oh. The more I think about it, I'm like, I didn't really care beyond that demo. Yeah. Sorry, okay. Mr. Style. <laughs> this is the number two game on the list. Uh-huh. Uh, it's from Sega. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Real players, real arenas, real elbows. Oh, real arenas, well, it's real. real. So, it, I mean, we already got Virtua Fighter, but it's definitely not Virtua. That would be because this is real, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like did we already no ready? Um, God, what is the other? What it's a it's a and punching it's, fighting. It's, it's a not fighter. Godzilla. No. Uh, this is one of the one of the most popular. Oh, uh, oh is it ready to games. rumble? It is not ready to rumble, oh. right? Because that's not a Sega game, right? right? No, it is a Sega sports title. Oh, okay. They had a sports, right? They had NFL 2K. Oh, wait. Is it NFL? <laughs> yeah, it's not NFL 2K. No. no, it's the sport that involves elbows. It's NBA 2K. Oh, basketball. Of Can course. I, wait, does I what does are you allowed to elbow in? Basketball? No, but you like you know you, you stop, you hold the ball, and you oh, put okay. your elbows yeah, yeah. on. It's okay. part of the uh, game. Okay, NBA Two K was released November it's, 10th. It's basketball, or as I like to call November it, Cracker. <laughs> right, NFL Two K is the launch title. Um, NBA Two K came a little bit later. Um, I, I don't know. Like I've never been a huge sports guy, like sports title guy, but uh, I. Never got into the NBA 2K games. I like NBA Jam. Uh, I've played a little bit of the NBA 2K games, and they're too. Um, I don't know. I just didn't. I just didn't. Just didn't get into. Right. I, I mean, I, NBA I, Jam I is is fun arcade. Uh, and yeah. NFA. Uh, NFA. <laughs> well, you know. Um, I. 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 Okay. So if 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 we're having the boys over, we might rent it because I feel like the boys will want to. Yeah, do do the hoops, mm-hmm. as the kids say. But sure. uh, otherwise, I'm not. I'm not gonna bother. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a so that's a pass for my swing yeah. and bachelor pad. If there's no anime on the box, no I don't know. <laughs> right? The ladies 
we're coming over want the anime yeah um so so there's so the number there's... two game that they listed which is nba 2k was yeah. not a launch 99.99 no, okay uh, no. number one from midway mm-hmm Boxing with social misfits. Okay. okay, here we go. This is ready to rumble boxing. All right, ready to rumble. and I bought this game, so I would still buy it. Yeah, I I think that's fair. I think that is a that is a buy. If that I'm being fun... honest, it's a rental because I did rent it. Oh, okay. okay. But you know, I didn't get it at the time. The but they're they're fun characters. It's I guess technically another fighter. So putting that on the list of fighters you have to buy in the Dreamcast for me. But, I rented like two awful um, boxing games on the Genesis. <laughs> well, which one? Buster Douglas. I'm going to say. Du- yeah. And, or, or no, no. I think I didn't rent Buster Douglas. I saw it. I, Evander Holyfield was the one that I rented, and they're both not very fun, is my understanding. I don't think I actually played Buster Douglas. But no, so I, I was interested in, you know, it's way better than those games. <laughs> I'm glad that they were able to make like some fun boxing games besides. OK, Out. so that was that's number one on the list. And so what are the other two games? You already mentioned them unless. Yes, I'm uh, it, no, uh, but also but but I just what was Michael? Michael, what were you for? Were you were you a buy for? No, I you said you're a rental. Rent, rent, rent. Okay, rent. so then the the last two games are NFL 2K and mm-hmm. Sonic Adventure. I've right. never Sonic heard of Adventure. Those. I think we're probably all buys. <laughs> of course, NFL 2K. Probably you guys are passing or renting. Or, or passing. Go long. A, or, a, right. a uh, interception. Oh. Uh, touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is good. Feel- Actually, I can. Re- I they had the uh, Sega Sports announcers on there because they didn't have John Madden or like so they had actors playing fictional broadcasters. Uh-huh. Uh, but so they would always start it with like, "Welcome to eh, fuck it." I don't no, know do it. Do it. Start it. I can't do it. Okay. No. All right. So I just would, I, I, it's, 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 it, it might go a little something like, "Hello." Oh, I can't fucking do it. I can't. I can't even. It's. I could do it all the time. But I can't do it right now. Isn't that oh, it's so tragic? Uh, so tragic. Oh, come on. Say the That's line. My, uh, That's my um uh Ken Griffey Jr. Super Nintendo um <laughs> baseball. Oh, yeah. come on. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sega Sports NFL 2K. There. Or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But, bring, I could, but they back. have like specific things that like that they would say with like they get the you know, sometimes you get the bear, sometimes the bear. They they do cutesy little things, but they would also have the voiceover guys being like remixed with their little quips in with a with a drum beat while you were playing with the menus because the menus is always the real fun of any sports game, <laughs> um, and of that course. sticks out as a memory. Also, it's one of those games where. Uh, People would, you know, they'd see you playing and they'd stop be like, whoa, I thought that was really on TV. I thought that was really <laughs> the TV. Whoa. You're, like, you're an idiot. And if, NFL 2K was like, for for the average person, if they were going to buy two games, it would have been Sonic and NFL 2K. I think those are like the two big, the two big ones. Not Sonic yep. and Soul Calibur. No, I mean for the for for the average gamer. Oh, yeah, that's okay. what I'm saying. Like NFL Two K briefly had my dad interested, who was generally not interested in anything other than yeah, maybe a football game. All right. Only really for the the graphics of it. But okay, that was 26 games. 26 games. The now, Sega Dreamcast. Yeah, go ahead, David. Right, because I was going to say I'm. I have the list of the 19 games that were released on September 9th. Um, I forget. Did you mention the game Pen Pen? Trialist, trial, no. trial salon. Sure, did not. Absolutely, that not. that was released. Um, also, I don't remember you talking about Mortal Kombat Gold, which was also ah. released on the Dreamcast for launch. Do you ever say ah, that, like when you're when you're down in a mine and you're digging all day, and then some right. a little a little a little right. glistening yellow rock comes out, and you're like, "Wow, that's Mortal Kombat Gold." <laughs> Mortal Kombat Gold, <laughs> right? Uh, this game. Right, because I'm just I'm looking at this list. Uh, there's also a game called Expendable. Ah, uh-huh. did not talk about that. I don't know don't what know about that. It's um action. Mortal game. Kombat Gold is strange to leave off because they seem to list every other Midway title. Yeah, yeah. Expendable is a infograms m- multimedia. So that's like 
the remains of Atari. Uh, right. Flight, I think Flight this Hunter was Thunder. before Infograms bought Atari. Oh, okay. And then I'm I'm seeing if there's any other. Can I tell you one thing? Monaco you... Grand Prix. It looks like is another game that you didn't. Is mention. it Infograms or Infogrames? It. I don't know. The top twenty best-selling games E-R-A-M-E-S. of May 1999. Okay. In this May. issue, this is the other side of the ad. Okay. okay. The, big, the big ad. If, so when you close the ad, it says the top 20 best-selling games of May 1999. You know what number one is? It's Super Smash Brothers for the Nintendo 64. Okay. And it says at the end, maybe we'll see a Smash Bros. 2 in the future. That was the world, man. We couldn't even envision Melee. a fucking Smash Brothers melee. Much less a brawl. Much less a Sonic the Hedgehog. Much less a snake uh, a Sephiroth. That that is a uh, wild. A Steve. A, yeah, a Steve especially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. And now that you 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 have gone through that list, and we can go back and figure out how much money we spent. I do, do really want to ask you that. That's not no, really my we're style. Not, we're not really going to do that because we didn't keep it. We didn't keep track of it. I'm we are. Say, in I, I basically Dead. bought the exact same thing that I did on the actual launch. On the day, NFL right? 2K, ready to rumble, <laughs> Sonic Adventure. <laughs> Right. That's what I really did, and that's and the rest can wait. Soul Calibur, so, I really, really want, and but I maybe it should replace Ready to Rumble. But Ready to Rumble is what the chicks are going to want. They're not going to want that. That's right. But I mean, that is still a, a, I think that's still a pretty strong lineup in terms of of launch. Like you, you have you know Sonic Adventure. That's your flagship title. You have Soul Calibur. Uh, ready to rumble like those are your fighters House of the Dead 2 at, you know arcade shooter you've got Power Stone you, know, you gotta put Power Stone right like people want Mortal Kombat people uh, I mean nobody cared about Blue Stinger or Trick Style but hey there's maybe someone doesn't of course NFL 2K look that that is that is a strong lineup I think that is more is that more hits than misses or at least no it's no. more misses than hits, it's more but, hits. but the hits are, are real hits. Hits. so strong. Right. And it's also like, and more great games were on the way soon. Oh yeah. This that is, is the true. thing that is really, you know, no mention of a was, crazy taxi, no mention yeah. of a fantasy star online, no That's, mention of yeah. a schedule of Arcadia. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, well, crazy taxi, right. When did crazy taxi that would have come just out? come out in arcades like that summer? Uh, Crazy Taxi on the Dreamcast was released in February of 2000. February which is, 2nd. In fact, that's one of my notes. Oh, right. Which is earlier than one of the games that was on that list. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that came out before MDK 2 by a month? <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Like, yeah. why isn't that on the... But you're right, because there were so many other good games. I would like to talk a hiding. little bit about my launch window for Dreamcast. Because I was okay. in it for Sonic Adventure. It's like nothing else really mattered that much, right? But I did have other things that I was passionate about. Mm-hmm. And these were, at that time, Virtual On, which I had grown to love from the Saturn version. Yeah. And I was extremely excited about Virtual On Oratorio Tangram, which had come out in Japan in the arcade that summer. Totally ignored in the United States. But it was coming out December, what, 9th? in 1999. So just a couple months after the Dreamcast launch in the United States, I am already sending my Dreamcast in to be modified to play Japanese games because we didn't know how to pirate games <laughs> yet. And I wasn't going to pirate that game anyway, because I sure as heck wanted to own it. Yeah. With the giant controller, got all that stuff sent over. Also, huge fan of treasure games from the Dreamcast to the Saturn and then to the, or from the Genesis to the Saturn and then to the Dreamcast. Bangao was out in Japan, also mm-hmm. December 9th, 1999, came out in the United States later. And so I had, you know, I had, you know, we had these various launch games to check out for a couple of months, but I was already looking at the Japanese side of things and seeing so much cool stuff was on the way. Like um, Space Channel 5 was out that December. Um, Choo Choo Rocket was out in November of 1999. Is that right? Am I crazy? Wow. Choo- in the U.S., was it that early? Wow, I thought that you might that have to double check like me on that. That feels wrong. Uh, Choo Choo Rocket in the United States was released uh, March seventh, two thousand. Okay, so... what's the Japanese release date? Why do I have written November? I don't know. Let me click it real quick. Uh, J- J- yeah, November eleventh, nineteen eighty nine, okay. in Japan. So yeah, I waited for wait. the American version for that one, but. Um... 
Uh, it was mostly those, but it's like they were, and Dynamite Cop came out that November also. So I just had um, a lot on my plate coming up. And these were not just like, oh, it's a game that's coming out. These were games that were really, really important to me. And uh, that was just in the first few months of Dreamcast ownership. Like, what a what a rapid, short, and dense period of time. And those are just the games that I was really excited about. Like, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. you, you mentioned um, Skies of Arcadia, uh, Fantasy Star Online, um, Crazy Taxi. You yeah. spent so much time playing Crazy Taxi. Right. Not even talking about like, you know, Jet Set Radio. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. There was eventually a Daytona game. I don't know how many people were excited about Dreamcast Daytona. There was Rez. Rez. There was, oh. there was a well, little we'll second that this Sonic the Hedgehog episode. Adventure. Sonic we'll Shuffle? That, we'll say Sonic that this adventure. episode is sort of specifically about the launch window. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. We can we can have a we can there's there's a we've talked about the Sega Saturn in every single episode, so we can hold enough space for the Dreamcast to give it more consideration for other titles. Because really each year of it, like because you get ninety nine, two thousand, and two thousand one. Yeah. And then that, do you get 2002? I don't think you, you do. Get a little bit in 2002. Um, well, according to this I- Ikaruga list, came out in 2002. In okay. the United States? Uh, no. No. Uh, See, uh, 2002 but Dreamcast. I got it. <laughs> right. It looks like. Floygan. Floygan Brothers. Any, ooh. Uh, here, Floygan. NHL 2K2 is the last. I mean, I guess that looks like the last game on this list of. Dreamcast games. Um, and when was when was that for the United 2K2 States? Two K two would be two thousand one. Usually release date. Uh, it was. It looks. It was released February twelfth, two thousand two. NHL two K two. And uh, but I, I I seem to remember like it wasn't Sega World two like the last or wait was Sega World two even released in the dream? It doesn't matter. It, like, I think it was. I but I didn't it come the first with, like, one the web was. browser or the first maybe that was the first one. Right, oh, the first one yeah. was definitely. But I'm trying to be like, what was was the second one? It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. But the point is, is that each of the, th- the main three years, yeah, have a very distinct tone to them. Ninety nine yeah. is like you're kind of the king because there's no PlayStation two yet. When does PlayStation two come? 2000, right? Or 2001? Uh, 2001, isn't it? PlayStation 2. Tell me when you were released. Uh, well, it was released in Japan in 2000. And in North... Well, in, it was October 26th in the, Uni- in the United States. March 4th in Japan. 2000. So 2000. So the, the Dreamcast gets a year before yeah, PlayStation 2 stomps it. And, and 2000, it is a wonderful year. It really is. And even, even after it's clear that it's not going to be a real fight, yeah, it's nice just to be there because it's like, look at all this stuff that is seemingly custom made for the types of games that I didn't even know that I liked. Because Sega at, on the Dreamcast, I think, is hitting at a, like this is a whole other episode of, of just Sega's output mm-hmm. on the Dreamcast. Um, you know, now they're looking back and like wondering like, well, what are our IP and I think the Dreamcast is the most bountiful period, even though they keep pulling from Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, and Shinobi. Um, I think Space Channel 5, Crazy Taxi, Shenmue, mm-hmm. um, and the these are even Choo Choo Rocket, uh, our f- House of the Dead. These are fun franchises that uh, I'd like to see more from. And we're supposed to be getting more, right? There's going to be a new Crazy Taxi. There's going to be a new Jet mm-hmm set radio and yes. a new shinobi and a new streets of rage but we don't know actually anything about those yet do we no not yet there's going to be a space channel 5 movie maybe oh maybe well we'll put that on oh, the yeah, list that's right that's yeah All right and i i just wanted you to make a quick guess the official dreamcast magazine when they ranked every single dreamcast game up to that point and there weren't many after what do you think they put at the number one spot? What is it they consider the greatest Dreamcast game? Can we? Oh, of all of all of the games of at all the end of, of the, the life cycle from the official Dreamcast magazine. Are are we going to be yes. surprised by this? Do you think? Uh, maybe. Uh, it's not what I would have 
guessed, like as the number one, top 10, definitely, but I never would have remembered this being number one. So it's not Soul Calibur, which would be. It's not going to be. It's not going to be well, anything Sonic Team. I'm sorry, Grant. You are right already. It is oh. Soul Calibur. <laughs> oh, okay. I, oh, I thought that was. Oh, I really? would have well I thought it would have been like cuz Shenmue is number 2 and I'm like oh yeah you probably would have put Shenmue as number 1 it wouldn't have occurred to me to make Soul Calibur number 1. Oh but, no, Soul uh, Calibur is clearly the best game on the system. It's uh, we were just talking I mean the lore Yeah it is play, so good. The oh, men, man what about the hot babes the giant weapons. There are so many giant the weapons eyeballs. in there. <laughs> Um, is there any last words we want to say just about the Dreamcast launch? Obviously, there's a lot more to say, and we'll do it another episode at some point about other yeah. angles on the Dreamcast, and Michael will return frequently to the show as he does. But are there any last like sort of um, launch window bits? Well, it's not connected to anything specific, but I did think that I was going to die the night before the Dreamcast launched because I was working late at a fast food restaurant all by myself and Ooh. the store across the street had been robbed at gunpoint like a couple days earlier that week, which is very unusual for my small town. And I was like, I'm so hyped up for this. I've been living for this moment. I have to get Sonic adventure right in, you know, even though I played it a little before, this is so important to me. And wouldn't it just figure if I <laughs> listened to my stupid employer and was like, Hey, we need you to close. And, you're going to get shot and killed the night before. <laughs> and wouldn't that just be a fitting way to go? You were waiting for it. Then you didn't quite make it. You didn't quite. I would yeah. know that's the alternate ending to clerks. Yeah, yeah, it is. If you watch like on the DVD or like they, the, 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 the ending that they originally shot and then Harvey Weinstein was like terrible ending, reshoot it, do something else. But originally yeah. it's like, well, I'm glad they were not able to get their dream all day, And then somebody, right. <laughs> somebody well, shoots right. it. I think they just, cut it because the last scene is just the last scene now before there was right. just one more scene yeah you're right they don't reshoot anything no yeah, they he just, just doesn't just get went, shot you just like cut the last 30 seconds it's terrible and you know what even though uh harvey weinstein has made a hundred thousand questionable <laughs> choices in his life yeah when it comes to the ending of clerks he was right that was, that was the right call yeah if only that consistency would have continued <laughs> Yeah, David. David here saying you got to hand it to to Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> he was right about he's he wasn't he wasn't right about all of the sexual no. assaults. We no. don't agree with him on that. We think that's no. bad and wrong and illegal, and he's in jail. But even uh, that ending of Clerks, even the bad. worst person in the world is right twice a day. <laughs> but, but Michael, is it true that you did not die? I did not. I'm still alive. That's I've good. got the That's Dreamcast. Good. Everything worked out fine. Um, but it, it just, it just, it feels like the extent to which I was excited about it, and that that this mm -hmm. seemed plausible, like a way to go, like to have this this little extra challenge right before the the um, <laughs> before the the day actually happened. Right. You know, it just it was a big deal. The Dreamcast. What fast food chain were you working at? I was working at Subway. Eat fresh. Yeah. Wow. Technically, it wasn't fast food. We were quick serve. Yeah. Uh, very... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if, people were, if people were complaining about how long it was taking, you call this fast food. It's like, sir, it's quick serve. Michael, thank you for your service then and now. And David, thank you for taking us out. And let me try to turn that down. Oh, my God. <laughs> turn it down. It got louder. Oh yeah, this there is the go. way. This is the way to. Now I hear nothing. Oh, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, I'm hearing it. It's going in and out. Not to the listener. The listener hears it. But like this, the song. The song I waited for because you know Sonic Adventure songs with attitude came out. There's all those vocal themes, but you know there's like, hey, there isn't one for E102. What's going on? And it's because. They were holding a banger. And that's what this is. This song is a banger. And if you enjoy musical bangers, well, that's why you've hung on to the end of another episode of Sonic Weekly. That's right. Sonic Weekly, the weekly Sonic the Hedgehog podcast, except when it's not. But it is. Um, 
hey, if you enjoyed what you heard so far and you haven't done it yet, go ahead and subscribe to this podcast using your podcatcher of choice, be it Apple Podcasts, be it Spotify. Uh, If you've got an Android device, we'll always shout out Podcast Addict till the day that app doesn't work anymore. Shout out to Bo, who's somewhere. Uh, Hey, uh, and in in the app, you can, of course, you know, uh, give us a review, give us a five-star rating, do whatever it is. Those sort of things help out the show. They help the algorithm, I'm sure, in some way. The unknowable algorithm, which, you know, it's thinking, but it's not thinking as well as the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast is the ultimate thinker. Yeah, let's think together. Uh, <laughs> But if you don't want to deal with the podcatcher, of course, we are also on YouTube. That's uh, at Sonic-Weekly, where the shows are accompanied with video game footage from friend of the show, Jack of Old Games. Uh, I'll be, it'll be curious to see what he pulls out of this Dreamcast extravaganza. Uh, hey, if you want to reach the show, there's always the email, SonicWeeklyPodcast at gmail.com. Drop us a line. We do the mailbag occasionally. So if you've got something you want us to talk about, let us know. But you can also email to ask for the link to our Discord server, where you can talk to like-minded Sonic the Hedgehog fans about plenty of things, not just Sonic, but Sonic is definitely on the table. You can talk about the Dreamcast. Talk about what games you got on 9999 if you did. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you were obsessed with Sony until Sonic Colors. I don't know. I don't know who you are. I can't see you from here. Um, hey, but yeah, you know what? We also, of course, got the Kofi. Uh, that is Kofi. Just, Kofi, you're right. I want to say coffee. It's Kofi. It's like hi-fi, but with co. It's like Kofi. you can buy us a coffee. Right. That's why I want to say coffee. Yeah, I thought it was Kof- Kofi. Yeah. Kofi. Kofi. It's a, it's a play on words. All right, it, we have the Ko-Fi. It you know it, it works as a you know you can do a, a like a, that's where you can drop in something into the old tip jar to help you know help with hosting costs with helping you know just keeping the show running. You can do it a one time one time sort of deal, or you can subscribe and you can become an executive producer of the show. And guess what? We're gonna shout out our current executive producers and if i mispronounce anything i apologize grant will uh, correct me uh we got pabsy is that how you say it pabsy yeah, pabsy. Hey, pabsy. pabsy pig dan sir two saving throws and sonicu so thank you uh if you want to hear your name at this at the end of this you can become an executive producer hey if and if you can't afford it that's fine if you just want to do the one one shot or you know just subscribing helps as well uh and but hey if you do if you if you if you do do the stuff over at, at ko-fi you get some fancy extras from wife of the grant aslin ashlyn <laughs> God, yes sorry. that's true yep. hey, I thought stickers that. or custom art yeah that's right yeah right that's that's there and, and of course there is the uh what, right you also get a link to the discord server hey have fun yeah, that's right. Want to thank once again Michael for joining us on the show. Got to thank whoever is editing this. Um, you know, I don't know who it is. Please fix this, whoever you are. <laughs> and of course, got to thank Bo for bowing about somewhere, and we'll see him hopefully next week. And of course, thank you, Grant, for granting. Thank you, David. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, listener. (laughs) Bye-bye.